Today's reading begins in Ezra, chapter 4, starting in verse 24. Then work stopped on God's house, which is at Jerusalem. It stopped until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now the prophets, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem. They prophesied to them in the name of the God of Israel. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Jeshua the son of Josadak rose up and began to build God's house, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God, helping them. At the same time, Tatanai, the governor beyond the river, came to them with Shethar Bozanai and their companions and asked them, Who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this wall? They also asked for the names of the men who were making this building. But the eye of their God was on the elders of the Jews, and they didn't make them cease until the matter should come to Darius, and an answer should be returned by letter concerning it. The copy of the letter that Tatanai, the governor beyond the river, and Shethar Bozanai, and his companions, the Afar Sachites, who were beyond the river, sent to Darius the king follows. They sent a letter to him, in which was written, To Darius the king, all peace. Be it known to the king that we went into the province of Judah, to the house of the great God, which is being built with great stones, and timber is laid in the walls. This work goes on with diligence, and prospers in their hands. Then we asked those elders, and said to them thus, Who gave you a decree to build this house, and to finish this wall? We asked them their names also, to inform you that we might write the names of the men who were at their head. Thus they returned us answer, saying, We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and are building the house that was built these many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and finished. But after our fathers had provoked the God of heaven to wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. But in the first year of Cyrus king of Babylon, Cyrus the king made a decree to build this house of God. The gold and silver vessels of God's house, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought into the temple of Babylon, those Cyrus the king also took out of the temple of Babylon, and they were delivered to one whose name was Sheshbazar, whom he had made governor. He said to him, Take these vessels, go, put them in the temple that is in Jerusalem, and let God's house be built in its place. Then the same Sheshbazar came and laid the foundations of God's house which is in Jerusalem. Since that time even until now it has been being built, and yet it is not completed. Now, therefore, if it seems good to the king, let a search be made in the king's treasure house, which is there at Babylon, whether it is so that a decree was made by Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem, and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Then Darius the king made a decree, and the house of the archives, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon, was searched. A scroll was found at Achmetha, in the palace that is in the province of Media, and in it this was written for a record. In the first year of Cyrus the king, Cyrus the king made a decree, concerning God's house at Jerusalem, let the house be built, the place where they offer sacrifices, and let its foundations be strongly laid, with its height sixty cubits and its width sixty cubits, with three courses of great stones and a course of new timber. Let the expenses be given out of the king's house. Also let the gold and silver vessels of God's house, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple which is at Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and brought again to the temple which is at Jerusalem, everything to its place. You shall put them in God's house. Now therefore, Tatanai, governor beyond the river, Shethar Bozanai, and your companions, the Afar Sachites, who are beyond the river, you must stay far from there. Leave the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in its place. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, expenses must be given with all diligence to these men, that they not be hindered. That which they have need of, including young bulls, rams, and lambs, for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, also wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the word of the priests who are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. 
that they may offer sacrifices of pleasant aroma to the God of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. I have also made a decree that whoever alters this message, let a beam be pulled out from his house, and let him be lifted up and fastened on it, and let his house be made a dunghill for this. May the God who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow all kings and peoples who stretch out their hand to alter this, to destroy this house of God which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with all diligence. Then Tatanai, the governor beyond the river, Shethar Bozani, and their companions did accordingly with all diligence, because Darius the king had sent a decree. The elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the decree of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. This house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. The children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. They offered at the dedication of this house of God one hundred bulls, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve male goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. They set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. The children of the captivity kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. Because the priests and the Levites had purified themselves together, all of them were pure. They killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity, for their brothers the priests, and for themselves. The children of Israel who had returned out of the captivity, and all who had separated themselves to them from the filthiness of the nations of the land to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, ate, and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, because the Lord had made them joyful, and had turned the heart of the king of Assyria to them, to strengthen their hands in the work of the Lord, the God of Israel's house. The First Letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, starting in verse 5. Who then is Apollos, and who is Paul, but servants through whom you believed, and each as the Lord gave to him? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are the same, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's farming, God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder I laid a foundation, and another builds on it. But let each man be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay any other foundation than that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. But if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each man's work will be revealed. For the day will declare it, because it is revealed in fire, and the fire itself will test what sort of work each man's work is. If any man's work remains which he built on it, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burnt, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, but as through fire. Don't you know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, which you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone thinks that he is wise amongst you in this world, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He has taken the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the reasoning of the wise, that it is worthless. Therefore let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Psalm 29, beginning in verse 1. Ascribe to the Lord, you sons of the mighty. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. The Lord's voice is on the waters. The God of glory thunders. Even the Lord on many waters. The Lord's voice is powerful. The Lord's voice is full of majesty. The Lord's voice breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. 
The Lord's voice strikes with flashes of lightning. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice makes the deer calve and strips the forests bare. In his temple, everything says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. Yes, the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Proverbs chapter 20, beginning in verse 26. A wise king winnows out the wicked and drives the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of man is the Lord's lamp, searching all his innermost parts.